Hello there, my name is Kofi McKinwar from Delft University of Technology and today I will, will be talking about smart sensor design. So let's start with the basics. What is a smart sensor? A smart sensor is a system and package that converts physical information, for example temperature or pressure, into digital data. A smart sensor therefore consists of a sensor and its interface electronics on the same die or at least in the same package. The function of the interface electronics is to condition and then digitize the sensor's analog output. Most smart sensors are made from silicon. Why? Well, because this allows them to be manufactured on wafers in batches of several tens of thousands at a time. As a result, smart sensors can be small, reliable, and most importantly, low cost. Furthermore, smart sensors can be ready, readily co-integrated with interface electronics, allowing all kinds of sensor non-idealities to be compensated or calibrated while also providing a digital output and e in fact even giving us other, other functions such as bus interfaces and self-test. These features make smart sensors really easy to use, even by non-experts. How do we actually design these smart sensors? Well, as I've said, a smart sensor is a system in a package. So this is going to be a multidisciplinary process. It requires a knowledge of sensor physics because you need to understand how silicon can be used to transduce information from all these physical domains into the electrical domain. It involves knowledge of packaging because while the sensor has to be able to interact with the outside world, at the same time it needs to be protected mechanically and you also have to prevent moisture from coming into contact with the sensitive electronics. And last, since the sensor is going to output an analog signal, you need to know something about circuit design in order to process these signals in a good way and not deteriorate the performance of the sensor system. So, since this is VLSIX, I'm going to be talking about the design of the interface electronics. So, the design of interface electronics, yeah, that's a big topic. So, rather than trying to compress a textbook into a short talk, I'll just present a design methodology, which can be summarized by four maxims. The first one is on the screen and it's do system design. By this I mean that you, you need to recognize at all times that you're dealing with a system and therefore you have to design the sensor, the package and the electronics together. And you have to consider ways in which, for instance, the electronics can be used to enhance the performance of the sensor. So you don't always have to try and design the world's perfect, most perfect sensor because maybe you can use the electronics to mitigate some of the sensor shortcomings. The second maxim is to do no harm, which means ensuring that your system performance is going to be limited by the sensor and not by the interface electronics. So you have to be, understand the performance envelope of your sensor and then design your interface electronics accordingly. The third is to digitize early realizing that um, a lot of um, sensor non-idealities, a lot of signal processing can be done accurately and efficiently and also flexibly in the digital do domain. And by digitizing as early as possible it allows you to leverage Moore's law which basically just gives, continues to give us more and more digital signal processing uh, power as the days uh, progress. The last maxim is to be dynamic to realize that because sensors are slow, at least compared to uh, the speed of electronics, a lot of tricks can be done to uh, sidestep um, the s any errors which would be caused especially by analog circuitry. And for more details about this methodology I would refer you to the following paper. So let's consider these um, maxims in more detail. 
I spoke about doing no harm. Well, if you look at um, the block diagram of a smart sensor, you'll see that you have the sensor which produces an analog um, signal. This analog signal is usually weak, maybe noisy, and it needs to be conditioned. After conditioning, the result will be another larger or higher quality analog signal, which you will then pass to an ADC, where it will be converted to digital. But if you look at what could go wrong in the signal processing chain, you'll quickly realize that it's the analog signal conditioning that could cause problems, because analog circuitry can induce offset, gain error, nonlinearity, uh, one of the F noise, etc. So the analog blocks are actually the weakest link. One way to get around this uh, limitation is to digitize early, which was the other maxim. And by that I mean moving the ADC as close as possible to the sensor and replacing the analog signal processing with digital signal processing, which can be more accurate, more flexible, and most importantly, can be done in a near ideal fashion. The last maxim is being dynamic. Sensors are slow, just like the real world signals they are trying to transduce. And many times, because um, uh, transistors are fast, errors can be shifted out of band. So if you look at this cartoon over here, what I'm showing is how uh, low frequency noise, in this case one of F noise, can be modulated outside the bandwidth of interest, where it can be removed by a simple low pass filter. And techniques which fall into this category are techniques like chopping, dynamic element matching, and delta sigma modulation. What they're all doing is they're shifting sources of, sources of error into uh, to higher frequencies where they can be removed by a filter, usually a digital filter. In addition, the, another thing that we can do is to use the speed of electronics to cancel circuit errors before we actually start measuring or sensing. And techniques which fall into this category are things like auto-zeroing, correlated double sampling, and auto-calibration. Now I've been talking about maxims, and it, right now things may be a little bit abstract. So I have these four maxims, do no harm, do system design, digitize early, be dynamic. But to put some hands and feet on them, I'm going to walk through a case study, which will be the design of a smart temperature sensor. So let's look at the sensor physics, the operating principle. How do you make a smart temperature sensor? Well, one way is to use BJTs. If you run a fixed current through a BJT, its base emitter voltage will be a well-defined function of temperature. And on this plot, you can see the base emitter voltage, VBE, dropping from 1.2 volts at absolute zero towards zero at about, let's say, 330 degrees centigrade. We would say that VBE has a negative temperature coefficient of about minus two millivolts per degree. Well, this is one part of the puzzle. We can also, by combining two BJTs, generate another signal, delta VB. The two BJTs are biased at uh, two different currents with a ratio of P. And depending on the ratio of P, delta VB will have um, a small but positive temperature coefficient in the order of about 100 microvolts per degree. So we can now combine these two pieces via a gain of alpha, amplifying delta VB by a gain of alpha, as you can see over here, and then summing it with VB, we can make VREF, a reference voltage which is nominally constant over a wide temperature range. This is the famous band gap reference, and that's why we call these kind of, of sensors band gap temperature sensors. But what we want is we want a digital number. So we can, take, we can create a ratio of alpha delta VB with VREF, to form a ratio uh, mu, which is, will be a linear function of temperature. Now, that was the theory. But as in so much of circuit design, things can go wrong. So what kind of things can go wrong? Well, let's look at the circuit again. The first thing that can go wrong is process spread. The effect of process spread on VBE, look at, looking at this equation, you can see that the ratio of IC divided by IS, IS is the saturation current of the BJT, will change as a function of process and therefore will cause VBE to spread. 
Well, there are two solutions to this problem. We can look for the mythical ideal process that doesn't spread, or in which the spread is very, very low. But yeah, that's going to cost a lot, and really a lot of money. And the more practical approach is to do trimming. So we have to make some um, mechanism to adjust the value of VB from device to device to get it right. And in line of our, uh, with our maxims, we need to use dynamic techniques to reduce offset, because the offset in reading out delta VB, which is a small signal, needs to be kept to less than 10 microvolts or so. So we're going to use chopping and CDS for that. And this current ratio is also important. This current ratio P, this gain factor alpha, need to be accurate to within 0.1%. And rather than trying to use huge components and get super matching, we're just going to use dynamic element matching. So this leads us to the architecture of a smart temperature sensor. It consists of a bias circuit, and the bias circuit provides a current to bias these uh, two BJTs. The BJTs are biased at a 1 to 5 ratio, and they generate these two voltages, VBE and delta VB. We're going, to direct, um, we're going to digitize these signals directly by applying these signals directly to a sigma delta ADC, which will generate um, a ratio X, which is VBE divided by delta VB. Doing things this way means that the gain factor alpha can actually be implemented digitally. And also, VBE can be trimmed in the digital domain. And following this approach, we have uh, been able to design time and time again um, smart temperature sensors with an inaccuracy of less than 0.1 degree over the military range. And for a lot more of the details behind these designs, I refer you to these three papers. So to summarize, I've introduced you to some maxims which I think encapsulate a design methodology with which you can design smart sensors. It's about doing system design. It's about making sure that you do no harm. It's about digitizing early and being dynamic. And keeping these maxims in mind, following this methodology, will allow you to uh, design smart sensors with transparent interface electronics, even in standard CMOS. <laughs>